Welcome everyone, this is Frostlight, and we're playing Project Hospital, a game where you build and manage your own hospital. This is a very detailed game with a lot of moving parts that can be a little overwhelming. Um, and I'm not an expert at the game, but I've played it a few times, so I can explain some of the basics. In this first Let's Play series, we'll be starting off small with an emergency clinic. Since we're starting with a small lot size, it's unlikely that we'll get to see all the department, but typically a small clinic like this will be focused on one specialty, in this case emergency medicine. Now let's take a look at the game's interface so we can make sense of all these numbers and symbols on the screen. In the upper left corner we have these modes. There is the game mode, for letting the hospital run, then there's building mode, where we pause to buy stuff and build, and then we have the management mode, where we handle the staff, the departments, and the different rooms that are needed. And then there's doctor mode. Now, I haven't played all the DLCs, so I'm not familiar with doctor mode, but that's something we can figure out together. Now, down at the bottom of the screen, we have a row of icons. These are the departments that we can have in our hospital. I started the game with all of them unlocked, which is an option that you can choose with a brand new map. And normally this is not available, but I think that for this specific Let's Play, it will be the right choice, since a, a small clinic typically has only a few of these, and in the normal game, you unlock them one at a time in a specific order, uh, which may not be what is more realistic for a clinic like this. As you can see, we have some important buttons down here that we will explain later. We have zoom tools, we have the day, the hour, we can toggle uh, walls on or off. We can rotate and go up and down floors. And here we have budget, treated patients, untreated patients, and how many come from insurance companies. We'll see that later. And here's the staff that we have hired. And here, in the stars, we have our prestige. So the first thing we'll do is take note of both the ambulance parking lot and the uh, ambulance unloading zone. We can control where they are placed with tools we find in the building mode. Right here. I think the ambulance parking lot is actually fine where it is. It's in a corner that has easy access to the street right in the front of the hospital. However, the ambulance unloading zone could be a little closer. And we can move it just ever so slightly closer, like this. So, one of the things that is very important about architectural medicine is to take into consideration the time it takes for critical patients to reach from point A to point B. That's why we move the unloading zone closer. Those extra few minutes or seconds that you can save by designing your hospital in the most efficient way possible could make a difference in someone's life. Now, the first thing we'll do is go to the foundations and plan out the external layer of the hospital, so to speak. We'll start with the entrance right next to the unloading zone and we will imagine that immediately after this there will be a reception area that is in charge of triaging uh, emergency patients which means that they will sort them according to their their hazard and whether they need immediate medical attention or if they can wait this is to maximize the efficiency of the hospital we will start with a small footprint for the hospital, mainly because we don't have a lot of money. We start with only a hundred thousand, and just the foundations can be quite expensive. So we will begin with this reception area, probably also we'll have some bathrooms and places to sit, obviously, and we'll assume this is the reception. Then we will create an L shape coming here. We will make it 
roughly this size. Uh, this will be where the trauma center and the doctor's offices will be located, also the staff rooms. And we will link them up. Now I'm thinking, when I'm, when I'm deciding this, I'm thinking, I need to leave room for a hallway, and I probably need to leave room for branching hallways into other places of the, of the clinic. So, I may make this a little wider, so that we may have the offices on our side, towards the parking lot, and the hallway towards the rest of the clinic. And we'll connect them here. Okay, now that we have the foundations, we can start building the walls. I think this is a lovely color for the walls of the hospital. Let me show you. Yeah, I think that looks nice. We haven't really finished with the walls, but I think it's a good idea to put the main doors just so that we know where they are. And I think that looks perfect. Perhaps we may even add a small decoration to the external place. Oh, hospital. oh, there's already a hospital sign here. What else do we have here? Mm, no, I think I think it could be fine. Let's build more hospital signs just to make sure that everyone knows this is the entrance. Because in real life, you really need to signal entrances very clearly so they're visible in even under um, low visibility conditions such as weather or night or fog. So now with that out of the way, we can start looking at the rest of what we have here. Now we could add another entrance here because it, it overlooks the street and that, that we may do this but a little over here I think might be a good place for an alternate entrance since we're gonna put um, doctor's offices here I think it's fine to just leave this as it is now when we are building in this department we can use all of these walls and different floors and when we click on them, we have the choice of different colors. This is very useful because it is very efficient to color code your different departments. Now, normally, you have too many departments to color code in, in a big hospital, so you may have to repeat. But in a small clinic like this, we can easily dedicate a color to each of the departments that we will be using in this hospital clinic and we can do red for the emergency area yellow for radiology darker blue for the medical laboratories green for the intensive care unit this um, teal or aqua for general surgery and we'll see about the rest of the departments if we if we have room for them but we will still have orange pink beige black and purple still free so let's return to red since we are starting with the emergency department and before we begin building let's take a look at the management mode this is uh something i've mentioned before where it lets you manage the department's dress code, staff, the shifts, but more importantly you can see which rooms you have in that department and which are needed for them to be operational. And you can see them here based on the color of this number. So for example, for the emergency clinic you need a waiting room in a doctor's office that is absolutely critically necessary for it for the entire department to be operational you need at least one of each and if you have a reception that's nice that's better a cleaning closet better you need a restroom 
42 operational and having these extra rooms are nicer and for the staff the same thing you definitely need a doctor on every shift and then all these other additions are good and then here we have diagnosis certainty which allows us as the managers of the overall hospital to establish how certain this department needs to be before they begin treating the patient. With a medium diagnosis, they will narrow things down to a certain uh, degree of confidence and they will begin treating them with that. And with high certainty, they will wait until they're absolutely certain of which uh, affliction or condition the patient has before they begin treatment. Now, obviously you can also set this to low, which I would not recommend. I think this is quite important, and as a beginner you may think, oh well, obviously high certainty is better, right? You know, you reduce the odds of mistake, and that is true, but the problem is that tests take time, and time worsens the patient's condition. Starting treatment earlier helps the patient get cured or treated earlier and that reduces their suffering, basically, and it also impacts uh, how well they think of you. Now obviously this is risky, this is like the lower you put this is more high risk, high reward. So I suggest that you to fine tune this for every department. For a department where people have, they don't have any terribly urgent conditions, such as the department of orthopedia, for example, or cardiology, these are people who have perhaps long term conditions, it's actually quite okay to put this at high. But for a department like emergency, where a patient may deteriorate faster than you can diagnose, it pays in, you know, in lives to reduce the certainty threshold and allow them to begin treatment sooner. Now, obviously, this increases the odds of medical error, which is bad. So this is where you, as a player, can start to take control once the hospital is running and help your doctors and guide them to the correct diagnosis. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on one of the necessary rooms and this will allow us to begin to paint the floor with this. So for example, we will say that a waiting room can be this area. Now, however, I'm going to start with a reception, which is optional, but I think it should go first. We will make this the reception then the waiting room will go immediately after i'm thinking of leaving some room for the bathroom which we do need we need some reference Now you could um, either do small bathrooms for different genders, or as I prefer to do, you can do a single uh, unisex bathroom. And since we're here, what we could do is add a staff room, a common room, to take advantage of this space here. Now, since this is the unloading zone, an ambulance will come here and then it will go through all of this way just to get to a trauma room if we put it here. So I think what would be in our best interest is to spend a little more on a foundation and have a closer trauma room 
at least for immediate emergencies. Bingo Puna. Now the trauma room is here, trauma center, is in the hospitalization area. Most departments are divided into clinic and hospitalization, depending on where the patient needs to be hospitalized or if they are ambulatory patients. Now, we're going to put the trauma room here so that the ambulance can come here, take a right, and be there. In the future, when this clinic expands, uh, what we could do is add another hallway to more trauma rooms in this area, which will not go bad, like, we could easily do this. So, in preparation, I will cut a little bit of the restroom to add a corridor, which will remind us to leave this, this place open for further expansion. Then over on this side, we need to leave some amount of room for a hallway, which we said we'd put in this area. This is going to be the other corridor. We're going to put doctor's offices throughout here. We'll start with two, but we could easily just have many. We could plan them out before we build them. Is this the one? Yes, this is. Alright, so we can now add a corridor linking this area. We could actually just expand. Yeah, there you go. Uh, what we could do since we have this place here is we could move the common room and reclaim this little bit of restroom that we lost, and actually it lines up with the waiting area. So this is how our starting clinic will look like. It will have a trauma room, and it will have the clinic area. And now for the further hospitalization area, which uh, is important. We are going to need all of these areas as well, which means we will need to expand our foundation a little more. So we'll expand to include place for the corridor. Then we will include a place for the on-call. Mm -hmm. Nurse station observation. Right, so we will expand the corridor in this direction. We will include an on call nursing. Hmm. Okay. I think an observation room should likely be here. It can't be too small, however, because of the needed equipment. We'll have to expand this slightly further. And we could connect this with here to make we're on it. We will have a nurse station. Nurse station. And an on call room. And then we will connect the two corridors. There you go. Now everything has what it needs. Now this, it, once we complete this, we will have a fully operational emergency room with hospitalization. Which would be quite, quite good. So let's begin with the building. Now each room has requirements, obviously. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the floors, which I believe are quite important for the pathing of each uh, sector. Now we will begin with 
No, not that one. What about this one? No, that's just bad. Let's start like this. This will mark the corridors of the area. Then we can have Ah, yeah, this works well. Some white to delineate there. And for the reception area, we can create another circle and fill it in. Now, this the marks like each area in an open plan because we will not be having walls in between the waiting and the triage and the corridor so the marking section with the floor helps people understand where they are so that they can orient themselves at the hospital now a place that does need walls is the trauma center we will be using these And for the reception area, I think these are nice. Let us see. Yes, that works out well. Uh, for the corridors, I think something perhaps a bit subdued. Mm, this, yes, this will work well. Mm -hmm, yeah. We have a lot of red on the floor, so we don't want to overwhelm. So a bit of white always goes well. For here, this area. Also this area right there. And then, let us focus on the flooring of the trauma room. Now, trauma room can get a little messy, so it's good to have some tiles, which are easy to clean. Uh, let's make them... how does this look? Mm. What about... this? Okay, that looks, that looks quite well. Now, this is... needs a door. Which... It, it should be a double door so that ambulances can go through. Now, since this is going to be the first trauma center, the most accessible one, I think in, in a normal hospital in real life, you would have this uh, trauma center reserved for ambulances. And should there be a different collapse, in the ER section, you would have another one a little further away for people who are already here and who don't need immediate, like, urgent medical attention as soon as they enter. So, we put the door there. Now, if you click in the uh, predestinated location that we did, it will highlight and filter all the different equipment that this. Uh, needs and the ones that it can use not necessarily this is what we took the time to plan everything out because now all we need to do is just click on each one and start placing things which in a small room like this may be a little difficult this needs a water room Uh -huh, I see. I only need one of those. You need an anesthesia workstation, which we can rotate with R. Can this be put here? Yes, excellent. And just give the way to me. You may need yes, a cabinet. 
and then for a couple cabinets here. So you can have a defibrillator. Disinfecting dispenser. This can go here, right? Perfect. You need an aquarium cabinet. This needs a medical light. We'll put it here. Digital imagining. Ah, yes, I see. Alright. A mobile workstation, which can go pretty much anywhere. Then you have some options. You have a whiteboard for differential diagnosis, an equipment table. You need another operating table. I believe it may not be. Oh, it may need to have. Ah, perfect. There you go. Okay, which means we can move this here. No, it prevents that from being. Okay. Okay, that works then. Perfect. That's how you make a small trauma room. Now, that was quite expensive. We're down half, but I believe it's one of the most expensive rooms in the AR. Now, let's move on to one of the doctor's offices. We're not going to build all of them. But what we will do is build at least one. Which we will... Five for the small. White tile. Mm. Perhaps that would be cool. Sure, that'd be fine. We'll throw in a door. Mm. Perhaps it could be a normal white door. And now some flooring. Panel. It's a little fancy, but sure. Now let's look at what this needs. An examination table, of course, naturally. I do believe an examination lamp. Let's put the eye test here. Let's add a class office desk.
And we all, all we need to know the alternate that we can, which we can place on cabinets here. And oh, that's an interesting conundrum. I know. Here we go. Move this there, and we will put another cabinet here. Then we will be able to put there you go. Perfect. We finished our office, doctor's office. Now we're gonna leave the rest of them undone because so far we only need one. And however, we could start putting some of these walls. Was this the one we used? I believe so. Uh, is that the one we used? Yes, that is correct. Indeed. Alright. So we can just set this up for the future. We can also set some doors since we're at it. Perfect. Now, we could move on to the reception. The reception is quite important in my experience. Since its duty is to sort patients according to their hazards I mentioned before, but also direct them to where they need to go. And they also in this game, they take into consideration the initial symptoms of the patient, which helps you establish their diagnosis faster. Now, we don't have a lot of room to work with, so I will try... ...to keep this. as small and neat as possible. I think that works quite well. Then we need some chairs. Excellent. We'll start with only two receptionists. We will upgrade them uh, to more later if we need to. with two. We may only start with one, but we'll have a spot prepared for the second reception if we need to. Now that that's done, uh, we could add some seatings for visitors. We have the room. And we can add some small decorations to make patients feel better. Which I think it's quite important. Oh, some flowers, and I think we could add another chair. Or a bench, perhaps? No, bench is too large. A single chair. Perfect. Now, this is done, and we can move on to the sitting area. And we can have some normal benches. The Info TV is actually quite important because it allows uh, doctors to call patients. So we do want one of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we would like one, two, three, four. We could put one here, we'll put two. Uh, put the one there. So we put the other one here. And then uh, this allows people to cue themselves. 
as they arrive. Put this here, we can put a plant of some type. How lovely, how lovely. And a bench. Now we can add some more benches, but for the time being, I think this is quite okay. And then we have a water dispenser, which I think is quite cool. And a few vending machines. I think that's quite quite good. We have coffee, we have water, we have snacks, we have places to sit. We can add some more benches too under the under the TV. There you go. And for the time being, I think we're okay. We can always add more if we need to. This uh, waiting room is enough for twelve people, which having twelve people waiting at the same time. For a small clinic, it's a, a little much. So we, if we see that this uh, waiting room is always full, it may be better to decide to improve some efficiencies in the hospital rather than just adding more seating. We could do it, but it's always better to take the opportunity to expand um, and revise what you can do. Now, let's do something a little easier. And start with the bathrooms. We'll start with a door, which I believe is a special bathroom door. Uh, no, but we could. I could just put this here. Perhaps there. And then we could start with. some stalls this will allow us a green amount of stall Uh, if you're wondering why I left this one here, I think I like to imagine that's uh, for wheelchairs, since they do tend to need a bit more room. And we can use this, and then we can take a look at what we need. Oh yes, trash room. Quite important. I hope those are usable there. If not, we'll move them. Uh, mirrors, of course. Alright. And that's the bathroom done. The bathroom's done. Uh, then we have the common room, which I usually prefer to just do in a little bit of dark wood. I think it's probably a bit more relaxing. Put some hardwood flooring. Oh, there's a lot of new stuff here. It's been a while since we last played this game. 
Ah, lockers decoration. Let's start with the door. I think for this door, I missed a wooden door, but it's okay. Mm, you probably have this right there. A dining table. Okay, let's start with the dining table. We can put it here in this corner. With some chairs. We can have a fridge. Right here. Lockers. This can be the locker area. Coffee vending machine. Oh, actually, we have a coffee maker here. So that would be better. Uh, it's a wall mounted cabinet. Interesting. A water dispenser never goes wrong. We could. Oh, okay. Or a bookshelf. Probably a bookshelf would be nice. Aha, cabinet. There we go. That's what I wanted. And then this look, oh a sofa would be also good. This looks will have coffee, sink, and the TV right here. So what we could do is could take this out, perhaps put it there. Remove this. Turn this around. Move this. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps here. Or we can put this, no, we can put this here, there, and then that gives us enough space for a small sofa. Right. There you go, now you can watch TV, you have some books to read, there's only one locker, but that's fine. We'll pretend that's enough room for everyone. We have all the other essentials, so that's done. Now, we have to make a decision here as to the hallway. We can either set up a wall that goes, let's say, up to here or up there. And just, you know, leave it open for later. Or we can try and expand it. And I think, given our money situation, we'll just set up a wall so that we are, in fact, indoors. And we'll figure out what we do later, once we have a bit more money. What were we using for the... Ah, yes. White with a single red strap. It should be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that has completely enclosed our hostel. We can choose how we expand this at some other point. Now, we have only three rooms missing, and I think we have plenty of money for them. In fact, we, uh, we could create another office if we wanted to, but we'll save that for later. The first thing we need is the observation room, which I think we'll do with this. It needs a door. And it also needs some flooring. Oh, 
this is for the hospital. Okay, yes, I see. So observation is for people who are hospitalized, and this is a very small area for that. So we won't be able to hold many people here in a bed, but that's okay. We can expand this later. We could um, repurpose this room for a diagnosis room once we have a larger observation um, section. Or we can create another trauma room, since this is still very, very close to the entrance. This could be another prime trauma room area. So let's start with... Oh, these are quite expensive. So we'll start with a basic hospital bed. How many can we have? Well, we may only be able to put only a couple. Yeah, that probably is as much as we're gonna need, so... Fix the cabinets. Probably gonna need to wall defibrillator. Disinfected dispenser. Well-mounted equipment. Okay. Advanced life monitoring. Perfect. Mobile workstation. these two which we may struggle to find the place for James We have observation for two people, which is not that great, but for the purpose of a small clinic, even just having the ability to hospitalize two people in the case of an emergency is quite good. Now let's go for the on-call. Which will go with this. For both. And hardwood in the other direction. Perfect. Now, this is going to be quite small. Ah, the dwarfs. Right, right, right. I think it would be nice if the doors were together like this. Now, let's take a look. Oh, we can put the wheelchairs here. That's fine. So, 
vectors are important. But we can put the trebling in the corridor. Yeah, we can put stretcher in the corridor. And we shall. Perfect. I don't know, this is easy. This one over here, there you go. You probably put another stretcher here. Yeah, I'm having three stretchers. Quite good. And we can also put some wheelchairs. Somewhere. Perhaps not. Should be good. I don't think we need any more than that. And that should be good. And this is aimed obviously at just a single person. There should be, since there's only two people in hospitalization at any one time, uh, a single nurse and a single doctor can take care of it. Uh, which means this needs office desk. We'll put this here. With the scene, paper holder, and we'll add a lot of bookcase, a lot of sofa. So now that we've We've constructed everything. Um, we could construct one more office. I think that would be okay. Having two would increase our patient uh, treatment rate, which I think is quite important. So we can copy the same basic layout.
I wonder if I made sure to keep everyone. Yeah. All of these should be red. I do believe that. Yes, I do believe. Now, do you say more fancier? Yeah, yeah, the black. Maybe printer? I do believe that's everything. Alright, so we have two... Two doctors here. So now we go back to the management mode. And as you can see here, we know how many beds we have. We can have one in the trauma center being uh, treated or stabilized as needed. And we have two hospitalizations here. We have night shift and day shift for doctors, nurses, receptionists. So let's begin with the first doctor. Now here's the staff firing window. So obviously all of these cost different and as usual, uh, people have different specialties, different things they do best at. You can see here how good they are at their specialty. For ER, they need to be not only general medicine, but also acute medicine. And almost always they will have diagnosis, I believe, that comes with general medicine as well. And they also have different uh, traits most of which are hidden, some of which are uh, discovered. For example, long commute can often be late for work. Hard worker does not take free time breaks. Long commute again. And in this person, they have four hidden perks. You also obviously have uh, different ages. And uh, overall, this is like a rating of how good they are and their salary. For the day shift, I do want at least one really good doctor. So, Thomas Clark, I think I will put you as one of them for the day shift. And then for the night shift, I will put Christopher Hernandez as the other one. And I know that this office will always have a good doctor that knows their stuff uh, day and night. Then I will leave this one unfilled as of yet. Then I want for one of the receptionists, ah, which are nurses because they're triaging, that's good. I want definitely one good nurse, patient care receptionist. The better receptionists they are, the better they sort. So I'm gonna put you for the day shift and then I'll put you for the night shift and we'll that'll be fine for now. Then now let's go to the on call. For doctors I think I think I want these two. I want you and I want you. Then for nurses, clinical nurse specialist revealing a new appearance of patient symptoms. I think you're an excellent choice. Uh, medical surgery. We'll leave you be for now. Patient care. Uh, 
you're the best one of the lot, so we'll keep you. Alright, so, and we have enough money to add another doctor, which doesn't need to be good. Like, for example, we can put an intern and just get them trained up and help them. I think in the day shift, it's okay, but the night shift, I think I want someone a little better, like a resident. I think that's okay, and then we also should buy an ambulance. So that we may go to rescue people. That was oh, that was quite expensive. Yep. Well, that's good then because we're finished. We're a little in debt, but that's okay. Now let's go to see the insurances. The insurances are the companies that will send you people. For example, I insured people tend to don't pay very well because, you know, they're, they can't afford insurance, so. Uh, I think it's quite important to, to have them. Then we can accept people from this insurance, which is cheap. Okay. Alright, so each insurance has different um, objectives that will be rewarded. So, for example, uh, to unlock this one, we need to treat three patients, which is very easy. Uh, we can treat one patient for the emergency and we'll get money. So this will cover our deficit, we just treat some patients. And I think this is a great place to finish this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you will come with me in this journey, as in the next episode, we'll start treating patients. If you like the, the video, please uh, feel free to leave a like, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.